found in Costa Rica and Panama, which will become relevant further in the video, in lower mountain cloud forest on larger tree branches, which is pretty important because this orchid is huge at elevations of 1,200 to 3,300 meters, making her a cool to cold growing epiphyte. Welcome to this video in which we are celebrating the amazing orchid that is Panarica prismartocarpa, commonly known as the prison-shaped seed pod Panarica. Even if mine may be a hybrid of sorts, the care is the same. It is possible that I do have a natural hybrid, other parents not wanting to claim ownership. <laughs> After having grown this orchid for three years now, I have to say that she has been such a reliable orchid. And when I say that she is easy to grow in my conditions and still blooms, then trust and believe she is easy to grow for anyone that has a controlled environment. Let's get the anxious times out of the way, the months where I am little anxious about the welfare of this orchid, and that is during the winter months, specifically from December through to the end of March. So let me explain her year-round temperature if she were to be growing at the lowest elevation in Costa Rica, at 1,200 meters, the temperature at that elevation is approximately 18 degrees Celsius. If we go by the 26 degrees Celsius, which is what the average temperature of Costa Rica is at sea level. Now, if we go a little higher to the maximum altitude where this orchid could be found, 3,300 meters, the temperature in those heights will drop to 4.5 degrees Celsius. These conditions pretty much match those of Panama, which makes sense seeing as this orchid is also found there. Now, my orchid is being grown in southern Spain, and here she has to contend with temperatures as low as 4 degrees Celsius if she were to live outside all year round, or 14 degrees Celsius if I bring her inside into my orchid winter holding space, which I've been doing in the past years. Based on where she's found and is happiest, my lowest outdoor temperature is within the acceptable norm. My summers can get to 40 degrees Celsius, but that is such a rarity, it's not worth mentioning. Usually my highs are in the lower range of 30 degrees Celsius. However, the 4 degrees Celsius makes you think that I should be able to grow this orchid outside throughout the whole year. I am tempted to give it a go this winter, but here's where my setup comes in, and you can see it is lecker and self-watering. With lecker and self-watering comes the threat of evaporative cooling, which will take whatever the ambient temperature is and drop that down by my guess approximately 3 degrees cooler. So let's just say that I don't bring this orchid inside when my lows are at rock bottom. Then the temperature within the pot will be 1 degree Celsius. Um, yeah, let me tell you, I can't stand anything below 15 degrees Celsius, let alone close to freezing. <laughs> and I firmly believe that this orchid would not appreciate her roots exposed to those temperatures either. You see, when the temperatures outside get that low, usually the days prior or following are also overcast, meaning that the days do not warm up at all. Those days would be around 14 degrees Celsius outdoors. Why am I telling you all this? You see, it's not about looking at what is the lowest temperature this orchid can tolerate or what is the highest. Because in some climates, the night temperatures will drop radically, but it is the daytime temperatures that will rise exponentially in comparison, which balances out the cold exposure by warming the structures up during the day. And this orchid being an epiphyte growing on those larger tree branches, the roots are dry or will be dry very quickly if it did rain. This allows the roots to stay alive and healthy. In Lekka and self-watering, the media is damp all the time. If my days were to warm up to 20 degrees Celsius, giving my orchid and the pot time to warm up, then outdoor growing is definitely a possibility in my climate. Giving my orchid and the pot time to warm up enough, then outdoor growing is definitely a possibility in my climate. So, what I'm going to do for this orchid this coming winter is leave her outside until the night temperatures start to drop below 10 degrees Celsius, allowing for that 3 degrees of temperature drop in the pot, still leaving me above the minimum of 4 degrees Celsius. 
Usually, if my nights drop to 10 degrees Celsius, my days are still around the 20 degrees Celsius mark. That will balance things out and I can get a little rest from schlepping such a big orchid in and out for four months straight. But it will only work if my days are 20 degrees and higher. And I emphasize that because after all, I am doing a care video for this orchid. I'm telling you what she can tolerate as low temperatures, but what you will always need to keep in mind is if the temperatures do get that low, how warm do your days get? And can the temperature balance things out for the orchid to be able to tolerate such low temperatures? Which is super important in my opinion. Just throwing lows and highs at you, winter, summer, I think sometimes we need to also check what happens during the winter day in order to make an orchid happy when <laughs> we're not so much. <laughs> now, this year though, I may get a little grace because the orchid was repotted earlier in 2023 and there is a lot of leca around the main root ball, which in itself was impressive. So the extra layer of the leca will act as a form of insulation, protecting the main part of the root system from the cold exterior. I did a video about evaporative cooling where I was actually repotting an orchid and I discussed the details about evaporative cooling and prevention. And if you would like to watch that, I will link it in the description and you can see the thumbnail card on your screen to be able to match and see that you find the right video. But if you're interested to see how this orchid will cope without the indoor pampering, please consider subscribing to the channel. Not only would I appreciate your support in helping the channel grow, but also your interest in following the progress of the orchids that will be exposed to outdoor conditions in the coming winter when they were indoors in the previous years. Thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate that. And thank you to everyone that has subscribed and has been supporting their channel. I appreciate that very, very much. As much as I would appreciate it if you would also give this video a like <laughs> and without wanting to sound greedy, possibly share the video as well. Give the algorithm a solid hint that this video should be recommended to a larger audience. Thank you so, so much. Having talked about the setup, let me tell you why she is in that setup. Notwithstanding that my entire collection is pretty much in inorganic media, but also because she is so thirsty. Having the self-watering setup makes her so much easier to manage. <laughs> the watering of this orchid could tax me on the daily while she is in active growth, and if I had her growing in organic media, it would really be challenging. But if you prefer organic medium, might I suggest that the alternative media to growing this orchid would be sphagnum moss or seedling bark? Yes, <laughs> if you don't want the pot to dry out too soon. However, that would degrade very quickly because this orchid prefers not to dry out until she has finished blooming. But wait, while in bloom, she's already growing a new growth. So yeah, this orchid is thirsty and this setup and media just works a treat. And now you can see how vigorous Panarica prismata carpa is. And if you're familiar with her growth habit and you feel as though you have a comparison to such a vigor of blooming, reliability, generous on the root system, as well as nonstop active growth, and you're thinking in Cyclia or Prostechia, you would not be wrong. Because before her name changed to Panarica, she was categorized as Epidendrum prismatocarpum. Meanwhile, before any classification, every epiphytic orchid was an epidendrum. Anyway, that's another story. And then she switched to Encyclia prismatocarpa. Then she switched to Prostechia prismatocarpa. And lo and behold, now we've got Panarica prismatocarpa. You can Google search this orchid under Encyclia and Prostechia prismatocarpa, and this orchid will come up. The characteristics are so similar, their care pretty much matches with the exception of the temperature ranges. The Panarica prismatocarpa is super tolerant of a wide temperature range, making her easy to adapt to a multitude of grow environments and climates. Let me just add that she does not need a drop down in temperature to bloom. Personally, I think she would prefer not to have to deal with anything stressful like an extended period of low temperatures. I can see some symptoms on my leaves of cold damage. But if you're like me, if you have limited space and add to that grow her in organic media where you can have the media dry out on occasions, then this orchid is pretty hardy for outdoor growing. Because as you can see, this orchid is not small. <laughs> 
My pot is 21 centimeters and she is going to fill that easily with her root system within three years. One pseudobulb can reach up to 20 centimeters and then when she blooms from a single spike coming out at the top of a mature pseudobulb, the height of this orchid increases another 60 centimeters. <laughs> It's wonderful, <laughs> at a minimum even. This is the best blooming I have had in three years that she has bloomed for me. In previous years, I managed to grow a spike with 29 blooms, always hoping to get into the 30s as a bloom count someday. Well, if you've been looking at the screen, maybe you have done a kind of a count to see how many blooms are on this orchid. Well, let me just tell you, we have achieved to grow a spike with 41 blooms. <laughs> that to me is cartwheels around the patio 41 oh i can't believe it i was just banking on getting past the 30s 31 blooms nope here we are in 2023 with 41 blooms after a repot this orchid is just madness it's wonderful the blooms do have a faint fragrance in my climate but the fragrance should be a little bit stronger but if the ideal conditions are not met then we sacrifice some characteristics be it size of growth vibrancy of bloom color bloom count <laughs> not me not this time etc <laughs> etc et so in my case it is the fragrance that i cannot speak on in great detail the blooms are very waxy very firm and the spearhead shaped lip is extremely solid in texture it's pokey pokey stabby stabby strong <laughs> there is absolutely nothing delicate about these blooms with the exception of the visual if i were to describe the fragrance then i would call it sugar white sugar there's no weight to the fragrance like a prostechia would have that knocks you out of the room where that orchid is in bloom the bloom duration is also so much longer than any prostechia i have in my collection this spike has now been in bloom for three weeks and there are possibly another three weeks of life in these blooms despite the real warm temperatures she is currently dealing with so when it comes to a spectacular blooming like this you would think it is only because she gets a lot of light while that is true the highlight is not to be confused with direct sun on the contrary this orchid will not handle direct sun well she prefers the brightest light you can provide without burning the leaves and plenty of airflow to boot so she lives in the cul-de-sac of my blooming alley where she has east south and west exposure but shaded with curtains to avoid any direct sun from burning her leaves Yes, my Spanish sun might be brighter and stronger and light than where you are growing your orchids, but this orchid comes from cloud forests, higher elevations, lower elevations, either way. That means that even around the tropics, she is mainly in shade and is mainly exposed to dappled light. Even the growth that grew through the winter of 21-22 that was grown in almost perpetual darkness because I had the worst spring on record in 2022, that spike bloomed with 29 blooms. So yes, we had a better spring this year, but have an orchid that does not demand high light to produce an impressive spike with 29 blooms, as was the case last year. That is also an orchid well worth growing, but I am grateful to a better spring in 2023 in order to get to 41 blooms. Um, what are we going to predict for 2024? Anyway, never mind. Let's not go there just yet. <laughs> Let's just enjoy what we've got in front of us at this moment. Having spoken of how thirsty this orchid is, whew, I have to flush this pot at least once a week with plain RO water, and then I fill the reservoir with fertilizer at a concentration of 600 parts per million, and the most recent filling of the reservoir with fertilizer <laughs> was at, oh, clutch my pearls, 800 parts per million, <laughs> seeing as the new growth is already underway during what I currently have are ideal conditions. Oh goodness me, what am I doing? I want that new growth to get to size and hopefully have it hardened off to a degree before December comes around. So while mine is already a large orchid, now that not only is the Panarica prismatocarp a thirsty orchid, she is hungry too. So this fertilizer level, let me emphasize, is specific to this video, to this orchid, okay? <laughs> this is not what I put into my pots as a norm. That's why, clutch my pearls, 800 parts per million. Oh, faint. <laughs> but I never tire of orchids that perform, and all they ask for is that you water and fertilize them without the fear of burning roots, or even worse, 
rotting roots out. And those are the kinds of orchids that I really enjoy growing. If you're still here at this stage of the video, I'm going to treat you to a little nerdy info. Here's a question I asked myself. Why did Panarica prismata carpet change from Epidendrum to Encyclia to Prostechia to now having had this genus exclusively created for her and another Panarica that I have in my collection? Panarica. Sounds like Panera bread. Oh, yum. Great soups there. But anyway, back to our Panarica here. It depends on whose classification you accept. Not just when they, the experts, named the species and categorized her. You see, it was Dr. Higgins. <laughs> now, I don't know if it was Dr. Higgins for my fair lady. I just thought I would throw that in. But every time I see that name, I think of Dr. Higgins. And a little comic relief never hurt anybody. Anyway, it was Higgins back in 1997 that took many former encyclias and related plants and merged them into Prostechia. Kew Gardens and Royal Horticultural Society accept this classification. However, enter Whitner. In 2004, he either ignored or rejected Higgins's 1997 broad concept of Prostechia and splits the genus up again among Anacaelum, Panarica, either Uchile or Uchile, Prostechia, etc. Yeah, I told you this was nerdy stuff. I just happen to really like nerdy orchid stuff. So <laughs> I appreciate that you're here nerding out with me. Anyway, tangent alert, block, block. <laughs> So Whitner, right, in 2004, ignored or rejected Higgins in 1997. Being more recent doesn't necessarily make Whitner in 2004 correct, unless it comes to the more widely accepted genus. They don't disagree on the relationship between the species, just on where to draw the line between the genera, as her. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Change your label if you want to. I normally don't. It's just too much waste on my tape. <laughs> This one now being called Panarica is because it's only found in Panama and Costa Rica, so they combined the two names of the countries and created the genus Panarica. The end. <laughs> So I hope that you enjoyed this video, even if you are not here specifically looking to see what it takes to grow Panarica prismatocarpa. Know that I appreciate your time and support. If, however, you found this video because you were searching for the care of this amazing orchid, then I hope that the information provided served its purpose and convinced you to either add one to your collection, possibly improve the culture of the one you have that may not be performing, and for that reason you searched for information, or it confirmed what you already knew and just wanted to see how this orchid grows in Lekka and self-watering. If you grow yours mounted, let me know the size of your mount. <laughs> Remember at the beginning, large tree branches. <laughs> It's specified for a reason. <laughs> Either way, if you have any questions on anything I may have left out, the comment section is there for a reason. Let's geek out a little more there. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though, that you please stay safe. I look forward to seeing you again in any of the videos already posted on my channel or check out the playlist that I have linked in the end screen card. Usually it's related to the topic in some way, shape or form. Thank you so much for being here. Take care. Bye.